Hi there, today I want to talk about early access and how it can destroy a game faster than EA destroyed CNC. Before I start, there is an AOM retold key giveaway question in this video, so watch it, answer the question in the comments, then subscribe to see a community post when the draw is made. It's that easy. So we know two types of early access. One is when the devs want to show off the game and feel it's ready for public to see and play. And the other is just scams. There's quite a lot of those, but we're not talking about it today. Well, there's actually one more, the pay to play a bit earlier one. What a scam, Ubisoft seems to really like those. Today though, we're talking about the one which is so bad, it kills all the hype the game had. Lucky for me, there's one of those on the market right now. Stormgate Early Access is a total mess. And while Tim Morton is sitting in his house looking at the numbers thinking, this is fine, it really isn't. There is no people playing the game. But where are people? You see people? Show me people! There are no people! Now, there's a lot of game with successful early access, Seven Days to Die and Phasmophobia to name the two. Yes, I hear you screaming, but Phasmophobia isn't as complicated as Stormgate. No, but until early access launch it was made by one dude. One dude who invented a genre, so I think that makes it even. I know I'd be labeled as a doomer and hater on reddit for being overly negative, but the game is objectively bad, at the moment at least, and the player count is reflecting that. But what I hear a lot is, you don't understand early access. Well, that would make me and the majority of people, it seems. Look, I get it, early access won't be perfectly ironed and not all of the game modes will be included, but in case of Stormgate they have perfectly working in-game shop, where you can spend your money. Even for the campaign, which in RTS games should basically be onboarding, because let's face it, RTS games need that. But let's say Frost Giant has to earn some money from their free-to-play game because for some reason they burned through all of their 35 million plus funds they had. And you buy the campaign because most people do play the campaign in RTS games. And then after full 6 missions, 3 of which you bought at the moment, it's just free, you're not only getting very little of the campaign itself, it also feels really bad. I don't know whose idea it was to make Amara into Arthas, but insufferable and completely unsympathetic, but here we are. On top of that, the only mode which actually had people playing, which is 1v1, is currently in a very bad state. There's balance issues, some questionable gameplay decisions, and all of that plagues 1v1. And as a result, it's only being played by some streamers who like to rant about the game. Now, I don't subscribe to the idea that people just don't want to play RTS games. Stormgate had over 28,000 people pledging just on Kickstarter. Those people didn't just magically disappear or decided, you know what, I don't want to play a game I gave money to. And FG is trying to change some things and are actually making Amara from looking like a Chernobyl resident to an actual human but I fear it's a little bit too late. First impressions are everything, not just in games, but also in real life. There's very few games who recovered from a disastrous start. One example would be No Man's Sky, and uh, we all thought that Hello Games will say goodbye to us, but they did turn it around. Sadly, I don't think Stormgate can do the same. Stormgate doesn't really seem to have its own ideas. No, the creep camps is not an original idea, in fact one other RTS game which is still in development also has them and do them much better, because while there it's good to clear them, they aren't game breaking and 100% necessary. Now let's look at factions real quick. Vanguard want to beat Terrans so hard their worker units actually share some voice lines with their SC2 counterparts, but hey, Right now, they're more Zerg-like because dogs, I guess. Their identity, though, is clearly Terrans, and while inspiration is okay, just copying something really isn't. Celestials, on the other hand, they don't have any identity. They're supposed to be this advanced alien race, which, by the way, isn't capable of making better energy systems than very weak power banks, which you have to build at all times in order to have the power, but that's a completely other issue. They just lack any identity, their units are bland, their voice lines are very mid, and the new hero is named Castiel? An angelic being called Castiel, I wonder where I heard that before. Oh. Last but not least, Infernals. When you hear the name, 
and then see them, you think their identity revolves around fire and hordes of minions relentlessly attacking the enemy. None of those things is really true. I don't understand how the infest mechanic fits with the theme at all, and I'm not the only one. Their identity is unknown because the devs themselves don't know what they want from the faction, and it really shows. What Frost Giant had on their hands was a free win. People were interested, there was hype, no real competition since CNC is long dead, AoE series is much different, and people playing StarCraft 2, well, they really wanted something new. It was a slam dunk. All Frost Giant had to do is slam the ball into the basket. Did they do it? No, instead they completely wiped and lost an already won game. Early access killed Stormgate because it's just not a fun game to play. Not in campaign, not in skirmish where AI is just kind of there, and definitely not in 1v1. Now there is a patch coming which should supposedly address a large number of issues, and there's free v3 coming soon? I really don't think it's enough though, Frost Giant don't have the money to burn anymore, and this is by their own admission and we all saw the documents. They're far far away from 1.0 release and the people are gone. Even if the patch is good, how many people will return? Frost Giant desperately need money. And let's say by some best case scenario, game source to 5k concurrent players or let's say that about 30,000 people play daily. That is kind of the best case scenario. How many of them will be purchasing something? I think not enough for a company which burns about a million dollars per month. They would need a miracle at this point. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope Stormgate can come back from depths of hell and probably wear the king of RTS games crown. Nothing would make me happier. Sadly, the game isn't ready for early access and I don't think one patch will change that. Early access isn't a cure-all for game being bad. Now the question for AOM Retold Key, was there ever an early access game which you were disappointed in? Answers in the comments, don't forget to sub to see the community post for the winner announcement. That's it, bye!